My name is Leslie Scott. I run a nonprofit called Youth Protection Advocates in Dance. We call it YPAD for short, so like iPad but with a Y, and we are dedicated to building empowered dance communities to keep youth happy, healthy, and safe. I've been teaching dance actually for almost 20 eight years now, um, and I am from Arizona. I created um, a company in Arizona called the Hip Hop Coalition and taught for many, many years in Arizona. I moved out to LA about 15 years ago, was really grateful to be able to become faculty at the Edge Performing Arts Center and Millennium Dance Complex, and from there um, was able to live a dancer's dream of working professionally, and I think even more so, I got to travel the country. I was able to teach in 22 countries. What inspires me is the idea that in a culture where there is a lot of suffering, there's a lot of um, self-shame, there's a lot of self-esteem issues, feeling bad about our bodies, feeling bad about aging, feeling you know bullying. We live in a culture right now where social media and dance have intertwined, and in the center of that is children. And I think that when we can use dance as a way to build self-esteem, to build self-compassion, um, even to speak about social justice issues, to use movement, um, what I call as message movement, um, it's it's, it's a really powerful tool of language and, com and communication. And I get inspired when I see children um, do things that they didn't think that they could do or when they get absorbed in the movement and they build friendships and it, it's just much more than the moves. Things actually changed for me when I came to California. Um, you know, coming to Hollywood and becoming a professional dancer and teaching in a professional circuit, it, it actually in a way changes the art form because it becomes more commercial. So um, it dilutes it, it dilutes the purity. So I think that for me, the reason why I created YPAD is that as an adult, I saw how that affected my self-esteem for dance instead of being about community building, healing, self-expression, it became about what do you look like, um, how flat is your stomach, um, you know how you know how sexy are you it didn't become about even your dance talent so um, I think that for me finding that out through dance um, has been really an honor because I've been able to circle back around and go back to what my roots were with, with dance which was community building social justice self-expression not commodifying myself or objectifying myself to be able to work in an industry um, that doesn't really appreciate specifically women um, as true artists but more as objects. When I first came to LA, I was wearing baggy pants, my jersey, and my dunks, and a ball cap. And you know, people who were already here were like, "Leslie, you have to show your body. You know, you should be teaching to more explicit music, which means you know more of the top 40 in music." And I was really, like most dancers, wired to please. I sacrificed a lot to move to Los Angeles. You want to succeed, and you're told, "Well, here's a formula to succeed." So as I started to do that, I got more notoriety. I received more praise. I received more affirmation, I booked more jobs, but I saw this happening with my career and this happening with my self-concept and with my self-esteem and the way I was let my love of my body and my relationship to food. So really it was it was um it was a bit pervasive. It was hard to figure out what was happening to me from an emotional standpoint, um, but it really came to a head when I, I knew I needed to make a change. I knew this wasn't the best of dance for me. I, I knew I was looking around at my colleagues and my friends and no one seemed to be really happy. Everyone seemed to be on the grind. Um, and I went to Mexico to teach at an orphanage and it was the first time I'd ever done anything of that nature. And it really changed my life and it's actually what made me create Youth Protection advocates in dance is the experience of shedding mirrors, shedding um, accolades, shedding notoriety, and literally teaching these orphans a Christmas show. So I had this opportunity to create this show and I remember sitting in the audience um, when the kids performed it just bawling, like really emotional, thinking to myself, I have never felt so satisfied in my entire life. Like not any of my jobs working with celebrities, none of my work touring, none of the accolades, not the greatest applause in Hollywood, never, you know, getting on faculty at Edge, Millennium, you know, all those things that you that you feel are success as a dancer. And I just remember thinking, this is actually it. This is true satisfaction. This is gonna last. 
I think as an educator, I'm an extension of the parental village and these parents trust me. And I decided I was gonna create an organization that was not opinion-based, but evidence-based. So I sought out some of our country's leading psychologists, um, like Dr. Tomian Roberts from the American Psychological Association. She sat on the task force of the sexualization of girls. She did a full study of viral YouTube videos, costume companies, um, you know, just basically choreography concepts. And she was just blown away at the level of, um, of sexualization and inappropriate content that was being imposed on children and very concerned how this was gonna affect them emotionally. Um, Dr. Christina Donaldson, um, she is an honor advisor panel. She's a specialist in eating disorders and body image um, and also how music affects emotions. So she's come on and offered incredible insight. She's also a dancer. So um, with YPAD being able to align with specialists, we've been able to create an organization that can stand up and say this is not any one person's opinion. Anybody that works with children in this capacity um, is, is going to tell you that some of these practices and trends are gonna have lifelong consequences. And we can do something about that. So we have power and that's why you know our a mission statement is that we are we're into building empowered communities. I can't empower a community, but I can help build an empowered community by giving them resources. So, um, you know, for example, I just got done teaching a big job in Iowa where we did self-esteem seminars for ages seven to 11, ages 12 to 17. I did a three hour seminar with the parents and then I did a 10 hour certification program with the educators where everyone got educated on, on everything. How do you handle bullying? What if there's a child with depression? In dance studios, there's no regulatory body. We're the only group of teachers in this country that has no regulations whatsoever. But what we want to do is we want to raise the standard of integrity. We want to say, these are some standards that we can all get behind when it comes to working with children. So um, if, if a dance studio has a child who's suffering from an eating disorder, they can call YPAD and we'll pay for them to get on the phone with our eating disorder specialist and find out what are the next steps. If um, a dance studio has a child who tried to commit suicide, they can call YPAD and we'll get them on the phone with a specialist who specializes in suicidal ideation and depression to help that studio owner and the parent get to the next steps. So um, we do social media fasts where we take children offline and we teach them how to properly engage in social media. So all of these things are really important aspects of growing them into adults, which is what we're doing, right? We're growing children into healthy, confident adults. So um, yeah, that's those are just some things that we're doing with YPAT. We created the world's first certification program for dance educators. We, were, we can actually brand studios, brand competitions, brand conventions as being safe spaces for children. So the modules that we focus on are um, social media use, um, um, all artistic choices, costuming, movement, concept, um, musical choices, um, how to recognize and prevent sex abuse and exploitation in dance, how um, if you're considered a mandated reporter, which any other teacher in our culture except for dance teachers are actually what's called a mandated reporter. This is a very important idea. Another important concept of YPAD is how do we talk about the body to kids? The way that we talk to children about their bodies is gonna affect the way that they view their body for the rest of their life. So if we're making harsh comments, if we have body ideal expectations, if we're not creating an environment that celebrates body diversity, ethnic diversity, even ability diversity. I mean, even to the point that we need to be including children with special needs into our dance schools. You know, for children with special needs, dance isn't therapy, dance is dance. You know, so we need to be creating dance environments that show everybody that we are, that we accept anyone who wants to dance. Um, you know, eating disorders is, is pervasive, it is epidemic, and it's really interesting how the academic environment has done this big anti-bullying campaign, but statistically, children actually have a higher statistic of going into disordered eating or an eating disorder than they do of being bullied. We wanna equip the dance community, we wanna equip parents, we wanna equip educators to be able to have body positive discussions with children, to be able to emulate body positive, um, because I don't, a YPAD is not just about the kids. We're about adults being able to truly model healthy self-love, healthy self-esteem, 
healthy relationship to food. There's bad habits around food. So for us to teach young children, oh, that's so bad, or that's gonna make you fat, or don't try that, it, it's putting our own feelings of food onto children. We shouldn't be teaching children about dieting in our dance environments. We're not dietitians. So that's another progressive idea with YPAD, is it that you should be bringing in licensed dietitians, you should be bringing in licensed injury people who are physical therapists, people who are kinesiologists. We're not doctors, we're not dietitians. We should not be giving this advice to children. So an example is, let's say there's a little girl named Jenny and she is feeling bad about her body. And then she comes to my class and she says, oh, Miss Leslie, what are you doing to lose weight? And I didn't take a YPAD um, seminar or YPAD certification and I don't have the boundary to say, you know what, that's actually not my, not my space. You know, what are your concerns? Let's go talk to your parent. I give her dieting advice. She goes and take Mr. James class. Mr. James, I'm not feeling good about my body. How can I lose weight? Oh, well, let me tell you what I did. She goes and takes Miss Katie's class. Miss Katie gives her dieting advice. This actually is happening in dance studios where children are getting unhealthy advice about dieting trends. They're getting it from social media, celebrities, and people that don't understand that nutrition is actually a science. Nutrition's about the brain. Nutrition's about building our immune system, about building our organs. Nutrition is not just about getting a flat stomach and stopping cellulite. You know, so that's so important because food is life. And to help teach kids that food is not just about looking skinny and sexy in your costume for the competition um, is such an important thing that we need to be teaching these, these young, impressionable kids. So we have an entire nutritional module um, also in our certification. And then the psychology of injury is another um, idea that we teach on in our certification because children are wired to please. I know myself, I've, I've danced through so many injuries, which has led me to live now as an adult in chronic pain. Um, we're kind of taught that if you sacrifice your body, you're superwoman. You get praised um, for you know not taking care of that sprained ankle because now you're going to compete and we don't have to restage the competition piece. Those messages tell a child that they shouldn't honor their temple, They're, that they that them ignoring their pain actually equals them being valuable, that them ignoring their pain equals them being a superhero. And what we want to teach children is that, that we don't want them to ignore pain, that they're not going to, you know, not to be fearing of their role or retribution, that the most important part of their body is knowing that sitting out during pain is a sign of strength. And I think any athlete and any dancer will tell you that when they've had to sit out to take care of their body, they grew so much more in their spiritual attachment and in their, um, in I think the insight of, of what their craft is because they got to see it from a different perspective. YPAD teaches self-esteem curriculums to children in dance and actually even children out of dance. We've had the blessing to go into schools and teach the program at schools. We cover everything from um, the difference between self-esteem and self-compassion, um, gossiping, bullying, the way that social media is affecting our emotions, healthy management of social media, um, body image, what's driving our choices in our relationship around food. And one of the most important things we teach is media literacy. Um, you know, the media right now is puppeting a lot of children's self-esteem. Their concept about boys, about girls, fashion, sexuality, food, I mean, it's just, pop stars, celebrities, Snapchat, Instagram, um, YouTube, all of these things are basically affecting the brain wiring of children. So we actually teach children about what's called neuroplasticity. Um, and it is not too big of a concept for them to understand that their brain can heal from messages that are negative or impacting the way that they're able to offer self-compassion to themselves. So we talk about the brain and that every single message they put into the brain actually puppets their self-esteem. Because self-esteem is, is not something that just stays in a straight line. It can go up and down and up and down throughout the day. We talk to the children about what mindfulness is. So we do I am statements. We call them spirit swag statements. So we created this thing called I got spirit swag because in dance swag is looking cool. Like what are you dressing like? Like do you have the dopest shoes on? So spirit swag, the definition of spirit swag is actually the fashion of your character and your soul. You cannot purchase it. You were born with it. So every child creates our spirit swag statements and they have to stand up and they say them and then they have to say why that's true. So if they say I am helpful, I say, you know what? That's great. Let's bring it to life. Tell me the last time you were actually helpful. So instead of just being words, 
basically spirit swag is actions and spirit swag is not meant to be kept to themselves it's meant to pour out on the world so we talk about how our spirit swags are gifts to the people around us and also when we get wounded we don't want to share our spirit swag because our spirit swag we get insecure about whether or not we should be helpful should we be kind should we be empathetic so we talk about wounding and in that we discuss how bullying and gossip affects our ability to create empowered communities Thank mm-hmm. you.